Hey everyone, we're Dude Reviews and this is the Maggie and Flex Show. We're here to do reviews on TV shows and movies and today's TV show is Daredevil. Daredevil first aired in 2015, not long ago. Uh, it's got really, really high ratings. INDB gave it an 8.7, very good. Very and Rotten Tomatoes, 86%, also very good. Yeah. And now James is going to give us a very quick 10 second synopsis. So this is about a guy who becomes blind, then becomes a lawyer, and he's also a ninja. So he's a blind ninja lawyer man. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, and this blind ninja lawyer man, as Jones so eloquently put, is played by a guy called Charlie Cox. He plays Matt Murdock, Daredevil. Yeah. Then there's also Foggy, one of the main guys. He's played by a guy called Eldon Henson. Then you've got Deborah Ann Wool, who plays Karen Page, one yeah. of the also main characters. And Wilson Fisk, who's played by Vincent Donaforio, we think his name is. Yeah. Vincent Donaforio, yeah. Vincent Donaforio, he's most famous probably for Jurassic World. He was yeah. in the new one. Recently. Um, Eldon Henson, he's been in The Hunger Games. That was he quite has. a big, well, obviously a big, big thing. Deborah Ann Wool, True Blood, the yeah. vampire sucking people thing. And uh, Charlie Cox, surprisingly. Very Daredevil esque within Stardust. Yeah. Amazing film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think every movie and every TV show has a meaning behind it. And I would definitely say, in my opinion, this one is about don't let something stop you from doing what you want. Mm. So admittedly, this person became blind, but he didn't let that stop him from being a, a hero to the people mm. by <laughs> being a lawyer <laughs> and a vigilante. Yeah. Also, I would definitely say the other meaning for this, I think, is the scales of justice. Yeah. It's, a, it's about exacting justice in his own way, either being a lawyer or mm. being this person, that daredevil, mm. that hopefully brings down people as well. Yeah. And when talking about daredevil, we have to get rid of the elephant in the room and talk about the catastrophe known as Ben Affleck, daredevil. Now, that one came <laughs> out in 2003. Admittedly, people probably thought it was good at first, but then you think about the at ratings. First, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, at first, it's amazing. But then you talk about the ratings, it's 5.3 on IMDb, yeah. and it's Rotten Tomatoes is 44%. Yeah. Now, I will definitely say this is so bad, <laughs> like ridiculously bad. It's yeah. one of the worst movies out there due to the fact that it's almost like they thought they'd bring a big name into this movie, it'd be amazing. But it's not, it's about Hell's Kitchen, it's meant to be dark, it's meant to be gritty, it's meant to be the, the low-key mm. superheroes, it's meant to be the people that are out there bringing down the low criminal bosses. Yeah. But you've got this clean-cut, suave-looking guy just patrolling the streets looking yeah. like an absolute mug. Yeah. And I have to admit, it's done so poorly. It looks Admittedly, like Ben Affleck was trying to play Batman. Yeah, like he, it's just so bad. Too late. And I would definitely say one of the main things is from this uh, series of, on Netflix, you have an image of the costume. Now, it's real, it's realistic, it's handmade, it's good. he wears it. It's rigid, it looks cool. <laughs> it, it looks like how it should do in the yeah. comic books as well. Yeah. Then you have this image <laughs> of Ben <Affleck>. Eyes. <laughs> it's CGI, it's fake. One thing that we need to make clear is that Batman, no, not Batman, Batman, <laughs> Batman is a point of this in a second, but Daredevil is human. Batman's yeah. human yeah, as well. Yeah. But what they really get into is the fact that they don't really have superpowers. Admittedly, yeah. Daredevil has a better sense of like, smell, hearing, yeah, yeah, see yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. because he hasn't got the, but the you, sight they're anymore. They're not like, you haven't got your Thors or your but, Hulks. They're not yeah. like super, super, superheroes. They're people that don't believe in killing mm. and they're people that use either their wealth yeah. like Batman yeah, yeah, or yeah. this person like the accident that happened to him yeah. to help others. They're, they're Devil and Batman are actually very similar. They're probably the biggest crossover from DC and Marvel. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. In, the sense. in terms of yeah, yeah, all that stuff. But I think some, one of the reasons why this was so much better received than the movie is that, uh, like you say, like it's Daredevil, it's dark, it's gritty, it's supposed to be uncomfortable, it's it's not this clean-shaven guy running around, stuff like that. Uh, the, this movie, the movie, the TV series did it really well. It's actually uh, rated R, it's an 18, which, yeah. I mean, apart from maybe like Watchmen and Deadpool, there's no like 18-rated superhero movies. And this was and, done so well that it ended up producing Jessica Jones... Yeah. Punisher, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, all of which, and all of which are, are dark rated themes. as well. I, I think Jessica Jones is fifty, but Punisher is definitely an eighteen. Yeah, kind of opened the door to like these, you know, actually showing makes it more real if you like. You know, there's no this like happy ever after. Yeah, you don't need all the colour, the no. bright colours, yeah, the yeah, rainbows yeah. and the yeah, sky yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. It can like, it can be gritty. I know DC is known for being a bit gritty, mm. a bit darker. But really, Marvel have done quite it, well as well. You'd think it was a DC. Yeah. It's very DC esque. Yeah, in but that sense. Marvel have done really well, yeah. especially with the eye opening thing from. Deadpool yeah. that yeah. has made why not let's try it yeah, exactly. and it is amazing and this that series. reflects very well in Daredevil this season yeah so early on I swear there's some great scenes in here especially the fighting scenes oh, and yeah. to just to get you hooked they do happen quite early on as well yeah. there's one that is a hallway fight scene which is amazingly done imagine the symbolic gesture of like 
a dark room with like mm. a swinging light as you yeah. slowly draw towards it. It's the same thing that happens in this fight scene. He's working his way through it, almost like a one-shot scene mm. of him fighting these people, yeah. slowly working through them with the camera close in the face, catching yeah. the kite we, a, we absolutely love the fight scene. Oh, it's, like we've it's referenced in some of our other videos, if you've seen them, we say like they're Daredevil-esque. Yeah. Like this is like the epitome of a fight scene. Like the way the camera follows the yeah. the, the camera angles it's got, the way they use the like, the environment, the, the lights, lighting, swinging yeah. lights. Like, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, like, all, all fight scenes should be done like this. It is unbelievably well, and yeah. it happens quite early on. So it you get it it too. Now we did mention about the fact of him having like a slight bit of powers. Just mm. to reiterate <clears> the fact, he's not superhuman. He's nothing yeah. like that. He just has a good sense due to the fact that he's blind that he can see stuff like yeah. the. The vibrations, yeah. the ripples, the other things that happen. They in don't. The air. They, yeah, they don't. They don't. They very underplay like his power. Yeah. If yeah. you like, like he has a, a good sense of smell. You you see this in the episodes as well. Mm. How he can smell people. He can hear stuff from quite far away as well, yeah. which is quite important. Mm. But I would definitely say it's it's the fact that he's he's still human, and they mm. make that quite important yeah. in this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They and, don't play anything over. And I would definitely say the other thing they do really well is the villain. Now, mm. Wilson Fisk is the kingpin. Yeah. Now, he is almost like, so imposing. I always find that whenever you talk about a character that does amazingly well, he draws you in, the he encapsulates yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. he makes you feel like so involved. Mm. And the fear that you get from this character, yeah. especially when you don't know much about him, the fact that people are so scared to even say his name mm. is so amazing. I mean, he done. Lo- I mean, he actually looks like the comics. Like if we lo- if we just move up yeah. the way here, <laughs> he actually looks like the comics. Something that really, really, really annoyed probably you more than me. Yeah. Think Jesse Eisenberg and Lex Luthor in the Justice League. They look mm-hmm. nothing alike. Yeah. He looks like a puny dweeby. Yeah. Even if you say he's Lex like Luthor's like son, Peter Parker, he Lex looks Luthor. stupid. Yeah. But like Kingpin actually looks like Kingpin in this. Amazing. And, oh, he's so good. Like he, the he's, suits, the, the suit, tall, the yeah. boldness. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the presence he has whenever he's doing a scene, and like the, I don't know, I, he's, I don't know how tall he's in real life, but he's, he's, he's tall. tall. But like he, when he's in the room, he is tall. He looks. He look. like he, he, the, everything changes. The atmosphere, obviously, it's just really, really good acting. Yeah, the, the, the villain is really, really good. Yeah. Is that Netflix took a massive risk in the fact of like investing into this? Like, mm. not many people would think a show would do well, especially like a Marvel show, yeah. especially when it had a movie before it's, it's had that a really kind of niche flopped. market superhero. So to Netflix to invest such. Well, we're going to go on to the money now, but it was a lot of money and such a huge amount of time. Yeah. So basically, roughly, on average, they spent between one to three million per episode, which over a 13-episode series came up to about 40 million. Now, that seems like a good amount or extravagant amount, Mm. but compare that to how movies' budgets are, and especially how other Netflix shows that they spent a lot of money on, the Crown was 130 million a series, yeah. and even Marco Polo, mm. there was 100 million a series. James, like, compose yourself. Speaking of composing, <laughs> moving on to the music. Uh, a guy who made the music for this one is called John Pisano. 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 Uh, and he, we, we have no idea who he was. So we looked at some of the stuff he's done. He's done Maze Runner, I believe. Yeah. Uh, Dreamwork Dragons, quite famous. Obviously Daredevil, and yeah. follow on with the Defenders. Also yeah. got Daredevil in that. So and, uh, the music that he does is really good and really amazing in this series, especially like the little uh, opening title sequence mm. where you see like the Scales of Justice again yeah, symbol yeah, yeah. come in, yeah. into fact, and I think it's done so well. And the music, it almost makes it iconic in its yeah. own right. Yeah, I downloaded the theme song and put it on my iPod and listened to it <laughs> in my car when I drive places. That's how good the theme song is. <laughs> yeah, so we really do like this series. <laughs> yeah. Now, we have been doing reviews, and mm-hmm. that was Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Leave a like and subscribe. Yeah, and if you do watch it, let us know what you think in the comments below. And let us know what you think, how good you think Netflix did at making it as well. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Arrivederci. Arrivederci.